the first time, legendary stage and TV actress Elizabeth Hawthorne is starring in a solo show, Blonde Poison. It's based on the true story of a Jewish woman who betrayed thousands of her fellow Jews to the Nazis. To tell us more, please welcome to the cafe Elizabeth Hawthorne and director Paul Gittins. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. So lovely so to lovely. have you here. Yeah. Snap. Uh, what do you do? Yeah, that's something, that. yeah. <laughs> um, Paul, tell us a little bit about the story, Blonde Poison. Um, yes, well, I was uh, in England at the time, and I, a mutual friend of ours introduced me to a theatre critic who mentioned this play, and I didn't think any more about it, but when I got home, suddenly this script arrived in the mail, and I read it, and I saw um, why he was making a fuss about it. And since then, I've seen that it's been picked up by Sydney Theatre Company, Melbourne Theatre Company, it's just been done in San Francisco, so it's it's kind of um, quite topical at the moment and I thought what a fantastic piece and I'm thrilled to be bringing it um, to Auckland. It's basically a, a true story about um, Stella Kubler who uh, got placed in an impossible position. She was um, asked either you are on that train with your parents to Auschwitz or you help us find Jews that are in hiding in here in Berlin. Oh. So she was damned if she did and damned if she didn't. Well, she was dead if she didn't. Mm. And basically, it's um, the story is revealed as she's waiting for a journalist who's going to interview her, and she gets more and more anxious mm. as the journal, the time for the journalist uh, to arrive comes. Does that and, sound uh, yeah, vaguely that, like the story? That's right. <laughs> So the, the stakes are for her uh, were, were impossible. It was a Sophie's choice, like, as mm. in the movie, situation. One child or the other child. So her parents going to Auschwitz or and, the, and them all going to Auschwitz or she becomes what was called a greifer, a catcher. So because she had lived as a U-boat that's living underground in Berlin underneath the, um, without the authorities knowing, um, and she knew where everybody else was hiding in Berlin as well, of course, because they had this um, Mundfunk, I think, where they talked to each other and it was like the underground a collaboration and uh, first of all the parents and she were working in the factories and they had the factory action where the Gestapo went and uh, took all the people uh, Jews working in the factories and shipped them out at that time they managed to go underground however she did get caught and uh, was interrogated because she knew this very famous um, uh, forger a forger so cause to, to have ration books, to get cards. To, in this wartime situation, the ration books were it. And she met this forger and who the Gestapo really wanted very badly. And when they caught her, they recognised his documents on her. And so they needed to find out where he lived. And in the meantime, she was tortured. And it came. then they found her parents. And so that was her... I, I think it's um, also important to say that she was blonde and blue-eyed and she right. didn't look Jewish at all. So she was able to actually live underground illegally for quite some time and probably would have survived the war if she hadn't been dobbed in. And uh, that's when she had to make this choice. An incredibly powerful story then. Is that what made you choose this play, Elizabeth, to go solo Ex with? Exactly. It was the situation. What would you do? Mm. Well, what, what would you, you do? do? Mm. And, and in this situation, of course, we've been reading and researching around the whole of the Second World War, Germany, the Holocaust. It wasn't just the Jews that had a horrendous time, or the, the population in general had a horrendous time as well. But the Jewish people, well, how, how many were murdered? Um, uh, uh, three, mm. four, six million mm. murdered. And it, it was the whole situation was. Uh, it, it was beyond it's beyond comprehension and the detail with which uh, all the the notes were kept about people and or uh, and the way they went about um, the Gestapo and the SS went about murdering um, the, the, the population it's 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 incomprehensible yeah but was she said as being ruthless yeah. as well though oh yes she was she was so what started out in an impossible situation so they had her parents at uh, gross hamburgerstrasse where they were all they were kept before they were deported to auschwitz and other camps they kept and she lived there in an apartment and so in the beginning she did it to m save herself and her parents but after after a while she became with her partner hans they became it 
she she enjoyed it. Well, she, I think well. she believed that Germany was going to win the war, and so she felt she was actually on the right side. And also, the family were very assimilated. They were they felt German, and they couldn't understand why Hitler wanted them not to be German. No, you're Jewish and you're mm. on the train. So. Um, so the situation yeah. from that is that um, she almost resented, uh, she had a great resentment about um, being uh, uh, included in with these people of impure blood and not seen. She felt so German, Germanic in her, uh, in her culture, in the music and the, the language and the poetry of, of Germany. And so to be sort of um, seen as um, um, non-Aryan, to be seen as uh, a, a, dis, um, a not a, a bad blood, impure blood. Mm. She, she couldn't all come to terms with that. What happened to Stella in the end? Uh, well, we don't really want to reveal that, but, okay. but it does come, the past does catch up with right. her. In, yeah. in not a very pleasant way. A mm. And the most challenging part, I mean, obviously you've put a lot of research into this. What was mm. the most challenging part of putting this together, Paul, do you think? Well, the, the challenging part is not for me, really. The challenging part is for Elizabeth, who's been incredibly brave taking on such a demanding solo show. But she is doing brilliantly well, I have to say, and I think it's going to be your defining role, I have to wow. say. Wow, yeah. <laughs> defining role. I mean, it must be difficult because you're on stage on your own. Yes, I am on stage on my own. So it's making, the, but it's beautifully written. So we right. should talk about that. So the links from this section of her life to this man in her life to this uh, going, getting captured and for the bombs then, of course, the bombs are coming down. Mm. Berlin, Berlin started getting bombed heavily in 1941 and she gets caught up in that the whole of the population is caught up in that. So all these links are written in the script, and if I can just remember them. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it was um, the writer was a Jewish uh, person as well, and she says she set out to kind of vilify the woman, but uh, at the end of the play, you actually have incredibly mixed feelings about this person because. Mm. A, if the war hadn't come along, she would have had completely different life and not been put in that in, in those circumstances. Oh, wow. mm. I'm mm. sure. I'm sure many people could say that about the war. That sounds like a fascinating story. Yeah, it really is. Yes, and what a team, what a director, and what a performer. This very is going to be a brilliant you. and obviously a very important story to be told. So thank you so much. Thank you oh, very much welcome. for having yeah. us. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> and if you would like to see Elizabeth in her first solo show, The Blonde Poison Seasons, plays at the Herald Theatre from August the 22nd to September the 2nd. For details. You can go to aucklandlive.co.nz.